All right, so hello and welcome to another Android Studio tutorial where in this video I'll be showing you how to create this step counter. And essentially you just walk around, it will count your steps, and uh, yeah, that's it. It's uh, very, very basic. It doesn't really verify your steps to the maximum accuracy, but uh, it's pretty good for what we have. And uh, you can reset it, you can just walk around and count steps. That's all I can say. But let's get started immediately. So the first thing you want to do is go to your manifest file and you want to use this permission, which is activity recognition. But it's not really that important at the moment, maybe for future releases since it's API level 29. And then you want to go and add this implementation for the circular progress bar. And I'll leave a link in the description. It will link you to this page where you can just find the latest implementation here. And it's a wonderful progress bar. It's very simple to implement. And uh, yeah, then I'm gonna go to activity main XML and I'm gonna show you, I already put it all in, but I'm gonna show you exactly what I did. So first I put in the circular progress bar. I gave it an ID. Then I sent it in parents, I gave it a nice caller, a nice width, a progress max, and yeah, you're just gonna copy these kind of uh, attributes, or you can put in your own attributes, however you like to decorate it, but this is the very basic XML. I did this all in a relative layout to keep things simple, but uh, XML is not my strong point, so I just decided to put it all in there, and you're more than welcome to copy. But then we're gonna go to our main activity uh, file, and we're gonna start with a private, var and we're going to do sensor manager and it's going to be equal to a nullable sensor manager and we're going to put it to null then we're going to import that and we also need to write another variable which is going to be called running and we're going to put it as a boolean to false then we're going to do uh, another variable of total steps which we're going to equal it to zero as a float and one more variable as a previous total steps and we're also going to put that to zero float then we're going to go to our onCreate method and here we're going to actually create a sensor manager and we're going to make it uh, get the system service then we want to add a context which is going to be the sensor service and we're going to declare it as a sensor manager so now that's starting to look pretty good and i forgot to actually extend sensor manager which is going to allow you to implement a few more methods and we're just going to implement all of them although on accuracy change listener we're not really going to use i mean on accuracy change is not going to be used then we're going to go and override on resume and we're going to set running to true we're going to set our value of step sensor and we're going to equal it to sensor manager to get default sensor and finally sensor type step counter and that's kind of confusing sometimes because they also have one that says string but just go for the one that says type step counter then we're going to write if step sensor is equal to null we want to display this toast, so essentially this is going to show that the device is not capable of running a step sensor and essentially what are you doing? It, it won't work. It won't work for your phone. It's like if you have an old phone, essentially. Else we're going to start the sensor manager so it can actually start uh, registering our steps. And we're going to add a register listener with the context of uh, this. It's going to be a step sensor and a sensor manager with a sensor delay. So it updates a bit slower. It doesn't use too many resources. It's uh, it's there. There are different other delays you can add, but uh, do a bit of research, you'll find out what they do. Then we're going to go on to our on sensor changed method. And if it is running, we want it to register our steps. So we're going to write total steps equals event values, and we're going to have it at the index of zero because that's what the Android uh, development site told us to do. Then we're going to add a value for our current steps, and that's going to equal to our total steps to int just to keep it simple or else you'll get this float number i just like having it as a whole number and we're going to minus previous st total steps and also add that to int now we're going to get our uh, text view for steps taken so we're going to set it to our current steps and also make sure to declare your event as non-null because it wants it to not be null and then we're going to go to uh, we're just going to create our progress circular bar by writing progress circular dot apply and we're going to set the progress with animation to our current steps to float since it enjoys a float number then we're going to create a new function which is going to be reset steps because by default the step counter just holds on to the steps throughout the entire let's say lifespan of your system until you reboot it of course and uh, we needed to create a way that the user can actually reset the steps in case they wanted to start from zero. So this is essentially what we're going to do here. So we're going to create a set on click listener to create a toast, which is like a warning that they can reset the steps. And then we're going to also set an on long click listener, which is actually going to reset the steps to zero, which is 
what we want. It's going to be previous total steps equals the total steps, and then we're going to write TV steps taken text to zero, so it actually updates it to the number. And then we're going to add a new method which is called save data, and this is going to be done through shared preferences. So the first thing we want to do here is create a value of shared preferences, and we're going to make it equal to get shared preferences. Then we're going to add our uh, identifier key, which I named my prefs, you can put whatever you want there, and we're going to put the context to mode private. And after that, we're going to go to value and create an editor, which is going to get, uh, it's going to edit our shared preferences. And finally, we're going to use this editor to put the float number, which is pretty much our steps, our previous total steps. And this is very important to save because uh, the previous total steps is going to be what we use as a reference when we want to reset our steps to zero. And uh, yeah, just follow along with this. Uh, you, it'll be a lot more self-explanatory later. But we also want to load the data, so we're going to copy our shared preferences. And then we're going to create another value, which we're going to name save number, and we're going to equal it to our shared preferences, get float. We're going to add our key, which is going to be the value that we just inserted as previous total steps, and we're going to place, uh, we're going to place a default value of zero float. Then we're going to add a log just to make things simple. I like to have it there just to know that my saved number is actually getting saved when I start up the system. And finally, we're going to make previous total steps equal to our saved number, which was our uh, previous number. And finally, we're going to go up to our onCreate method to actually insert these methods as load data. So every time you start up the app, it loads the data and reset steps. So every time you click on the button or long tap it, it actually resets the steps. So these are two important uh, methods you have to insert. But that's essentially all there is to this code. If you start up the program, you'll see, for me, it started at 1304 because I already did a lot of steps and your system does not forget it until you reboot. But if you long tap it, it will reset to zero. And uh, if you start shaking your phone or go for a walk, it will start uh, making these steps. So it's a really cool uh, hardware kind of uh, experiment you can do if you're getting, if you're new to Android. And uh, finally, there's a few things I don't like about this is pretty much the accuracy. I mean, it's very easy to shake your phone, as I just said, but uh, I'm sure with a little bit more experience, you can actually start to implement kind of a distance or a, insert an accelerometer or something that verifies that you're actually going the distance of the steps because at this point it's just registering uh, your shakes and essentially that can be accurate to a certain extent but it's not 100% accurate. And uh, I've seen a few YouTubers comment on this uh, flaw of this kind of step counter and many of the Google Play Store apps actually do it this way and it's very very naughty in my opinion but uh, it's very cool. I mean it's cool if you're starting out and I really hope this tutorial helped if you have any other ideas or questions or confusions or requests just leave them in the comment section other than that uh, yeah i have nothing else to add i'll see you in the next video